There is the new there is the new popover API. With it, you can easily create a popover without using a library and without writing a single line of JavaScript. This has been supported in all major browsers since this year, and I'll show you how easy it is to use. The popover API is a new standard designed to make it easy for web developers to display popovers over other elements on a website. You don't have to handle the different states yourself. The actions for opening and closing work super easily and accessibility has been considered from the start. Let's take a look. So how does a popover work? We simply create a button in HTML that is supposed to open the popover. Give it the attribute popover target and a corresponding ID by popover. Then we assign an HTML element that is supposed to be the popover, this ID and the attribute popover, that's it. We can now click the button to open the popover and if you click somewhere outside the popover it will close again, a so-called light dismiss. This is enabled by default. Additionally, this button currently has a toggle function because we haven't specified otherwise. What also works is creating a button within the popover, giving it the correct target and explicitly defining a height action. Add some CSS to make it look decent and we have a popover that can also be closed by clicking an X button. By default a popover is in auto mode, which means it will close other open popovers when opened and light dismiss is active. If you set a popover to manual mode, it won't close other popovers, there is no light dismiss and we need an action to toggle or close the popover. Here we already have the hide action on the X. What is particularly practical is the pseudo element backdrop that I can use. This gives us an element that, when the popover is open, overlays the rest of the website. We can easily define a background color with some transparency and that's it. This makes it much easier to put the focus on the popover. However, it's important to note that a popover is not a modal. So what does that mean? A popover doesn't make the rest of the website inert. You can still, for example, click buttons while the popover is open. If you don't want that, I recommend dialog show modal instead of a popover. You'll need to write a bit of JavaScript, but you'll get a true modal that the user must interact with at that moment. But for many purposes, the popover is still super suitable. And I'll show you how to make it look a bit nicer. The popover attribute itself doesn't add semantics to an element, so we can use an HTML dialog element for it. Now I add a bit more content to the popover, I also add a button for another action, this button gets the class primary. The button above also gets this class and the X gets its own class. Now a few lines of CSS, we define another font family, we also remove the border of the popover, give it some padding, rounded corners and a maximum width. The icon button is displayed in grayscale. Then a small adjustment for the heading, the paragraph and also the button in the popover. Finally, we create a class for the primary buttons with a blue background, padding, rounded corners, etc. And then a hover state. And that's it and it already looks really good. A few lines of HTML and CSS, not a single line of JavaScript and we have a nice popover. One last note, we can of course use JavaScript if you want. For example, with the command show popover, a popover can be opened very easily. In the video description you'll find a few links to further other documentation and also to this code example. And that's it for this video. Feel free to write in the comments if you found the topic helpful. I would really appreciate a like or a subscription as it would help me a lot in making such videos. See you next time.